one two one two hello my good people me and tito are here it's episode 21 of the mr peter parker podcast i'm fucking amp tito how are you chilling man how are you everything good good man eventful eventful last month a lot of stuff going on we had some cool guests i've been kind of taking it easy with the podcast because like i told my wife uh, and i know you can relate to this i worked incredibly hard for 20 years and i'm just trying to do it at my own pace and find out what that pace is right now you know what i mean so like i'm not trying to overdo it like dude's like you want to dj every day no Quality, Twice, quality four, over quantity. Four quality times a month. Quantity. Yeah, dog. I'm trying to do it different. And definitely, um, my man June said to me uh, from Epic Records, I was talking to June. He's a longtime promo guy, great friend, great guy. Uh, has a young child and wish him and his family the best. He, he was like, you can, you can be successful and still have a great career. And you don't have to be like the most popular thing in the world. Like you can be successful and you don't have to be, you could be a little bit under the radar, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I hear you. I hear that. I was always also, trying to stay lit. There's also another side that everybody wants to be lit, bro. You know? I, I was lit what, for a very long time. So I was like, what, I get it. What you think I rap for? To push a fucking, fucking rap, rap for? for? Come on, man. Yo, I was <laughs> down in Atlanta when Ye was at the Mercedes Benz for the first time. We're going to talk about that coming up this episode. See, look, we're going to recap the last thing we did with Dark Low. He's going away uh, yeah. in a couple of days. I think he's going to do his little one year. So we wish him the best. Shouts to, to Dark Low. I yes. spoke to him personally. It's a good guy. You know, our positive vibes are with him. But I was talking a story last episode about going down to Atlanta and taking mushrooms. Yeah, and yep. I, two days before, and let me recap. I'm going to give you the amended version. This is like the little small version, Tito. Okay, right, right, I right. Took uh, mushrooms two days before the trip. Had a good mm -hmm. time. It was kind of overwhelming. Went down there. Now, mind you, I, I was smoking a little bit. We at the house. We've been hanging out during the pandemic. I get down there. No trees. Off the mushrooms. Not eating any food at all. I can't eat. I'm drinking water. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about. A wild adventure in Atlanta. Uh, shout out to my man DJ Kerosene. You remember him from '88-9? Yep, of course. Right with the beard. Yeah. Now he got like a whole like lion man look. Now that he has, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's what you have, but on the top and the sides. You know what right, I mean? Like, right, right, right. He's I a can, rare I beast. I can't grow it that 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 deep. I, mean, I was yeah. at his crib. He tried to pull it back in a ponytail. He looked like a European soccer player. I was like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, no. So, shot to him. Yeah, no, he took me thing. all over the place and showed me, like, parts of Atlanta that I haven't been to before. And, like, he lives in the area called Kirkwood, where, like, Future kind of grew up in that area. Right. And then East Point took me to the dungeon where Outkast and them and Goody Mob recorded their albums in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that big boy's turned into an Airbnb, and you can rent it out. It's in this little country neighborhood, like way small, grimy, like it's different. You're hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we drove around. I was cool. I wasn't eating any food. We went to breakfast, kerosene, got like chicken and gravy and shit. I was like, yeah, guys have sushi. Like I did like a rice and beef, the small piece of rice. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, Something nice and heavy in a, on a uh, uh, July uh, afternoon in, in, in Georgia. Yo, yeah, 9 a.m. Like, it's 90. He's got chicken and gravy. I was like, can I just have an egg? scrambled well done with salt on it piece so, of wheat toast yeah that's it that's it that's it that's it <laughs> so you know we did that little thing and we got to run around a little bit and yeah. the cool thing i ended up linking up with a couple of guys that we uh that i played basketball with at curry um james cooper and uh our buddy uh, to Big uh, tommy Coop. lennon from Sham, um, Massachusetts, Lennon. right? Yes, yes. Tommy's down there working. Coop was visiting. Actually, uh, Coop is working for Childish Gambino, and he is like a personal trainer, and he was living out there, getting this guy ready for some TV things that he's doing, and he's shooting Atlanta Coop, season three. Coop's always been Hollywood. He was, he was on a, like one of those one of those Bachelor shows or something yes, like that. Yes, he was. He got to Coop, man. He, he's doing his thing, man. Shout Talk out about Coop. staying lit. Coop right. is incredibly lit, man. Right. I know, but it, it was cool, though. I seen him. I, I see him down there and i watched a video that he was online doing like little basketball moves and i seen a person i said all them squats bro you still can't dunk i was like the fuck <laughs> it was great uh, nah, he's the man bro nah, definitely we found the sushi with coop you know, you know what i'm saying i found the sushi oh yeah he, he, he's got some some fried okra that you can he use found <laughs> the sushi with coop we hung up with those guys 
Yeah. And dogs, anytime you like, for me, I hadn't taken mushrooms in a long time. So it kept on coming in and coming out. And I was like bugged out. By the time I got the DJ on Thursday night, fam, I was so, I had like basically like, like not starved myself, but like fasted. You know what I mean? Like yeah, for the yeah. whole day I DJed. They were playing like a lot of like Griselda, and like RJ Payne, a kind of like slower tempo, real lyrical Conway stuff. You yeah. Know, you know me, man. I came in with straight Keith Murray, Wu Tang, Nas, heat. Biggie. Nineties, nineties, boom bap. Yes. Yo, the yeah. shit that we, and I threw a lot of heat, bro. A lot of heat. So we had a lot of fun. It was cool being in a place that I hadn't been in a while and play records and have everything react and people coming up and high five and you in the booth and like walking yeah. through the crowd and a girl grab you afterwards like nice set I liked your set I was like that you know yeah, that's yeah. fun so, like yeah. that vibe of like how it used to be you know what I mean right um so well you play the records that you you're comfortable with too and that you like you know what I mean I'm sure it's uh <laughs> you know you how it was pocket. yeah you get you, you know pocket. how it was when I first started DJing and I would yeah. kind of play for myself Yes. And, and and I don't do that anymore. I play right. for the room. And if I'm looking at the room and they're all kind of bopping this other shit, but the energy is low, I'm going to come out with uh, the uh, Made You Look remix with Jada Kiss first song. You know what right. I mean? And like, I need it from the top and like bring yeah. it back again, hit the sound of, I'm waking the room up. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. I've always been to shake it up. So it was a lot of fun to do that. And the day I was down there, I was DJing was when Kanye was at the thing doing the big the first, freak show. The first, the first, the first one, one. The first right. one. Shout out to my man Casey Pluto. He's a, um, a Minneapolis artist, African kid, super cool, super nice guy. Um, mm -hmm. I knew him from the beginning of Go 95.3. He was a local artist. He was friends with Lexi Alge. And okay. I've watched, rest in peace to Lexi. I, I will, I'll get into this. Um, so as I'm down there DJing, I'm thinking about Casey, right? Because I know he's with Kanye. He's lived with Kanye for like a year at this point. And, and you know how Ye works with the artists and the other younger people, whether it's Travis Scott for a little while, or Kid Cudi helped him with something. There's a lot of people around Kanye helping him. Yep. Much yep. different than the Nas situation that's just like Nas and Hit Boy. This is like right. a like a like a right. Dr. Dre kind of factory deal with, with Kanye. And right. and I, I was thinking of Casey the whole time because I'm so proud of this kid. He's like a uh, local artist, very talented, very unique voice. And um Yo, and he's up there with Ye, and he's probably evolved with this album heavily. So I'm anticipating hearing it because I know I'm going to hear Casey indirectly exactly. through yeah, the whole yeah, shit. Right, 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 right. Like once you hear Consequence, you kind of, then you listen to the second Kanye album, you're like, oh, yeah, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it. You know the lane that he's in, right? Right. Well, who's helping him make and finalize these projects? Right, and right. Casey's definitely like a creative genius and like a muse for a lot of this stuff. So, Tito, what's your take on the Kanye rollout? Are you feeling this? I don't know, man. I, it, it's kind of like I don't know, it's frustrating. Obviously, everybody's frustrated. Everybody wants to hear it. You know, there's new Nas versus new right. Jay Electronica versus, right. Hope, you know, like, 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 the locks. you know, like, yeah, there's all types of like features that you're kind of you're like, people are saying that, oh, yeah, he's back to rapping, rapping, you know what I mean? Which, right. which, you know, everybody kind of would look forward to. But, right. you know, it, it's funny. I, I saw something the other day where someone said, just release it. And then as you change it, re-release it. You know what I mean? Like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, so yeah. we can see. So and can have see it amend process. it live. That's kind yeah. of how we did the life of Pablo was like an right. evolving thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you see the process that he's going for and you see the original, where he was going and then where he took it eventually. Right. right. Like, I think that would honestly be like super, you know, like new and, in, 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 I don't know, dope, like a dope thing for them to do. It like, is but, cool. But like the concept though, anyway, but like, I don't know, I'm just kind of sick of waiting. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's why yeah. I like. Yeah, the Nas came out in the middle of the waiting for it and really was like, dog, just drop the shit. If it's good, drop it, yay. But I get yeah. what he's doing in the weight room with the mask and the spiky jacket doing curls. You got people that don't even matter in the room. It's like crazy. Like, I like I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't, I don't get it at all. I, I think what, what we- I don't understand okay. it. All right, so, I, like, so, so, so okay. Good. You know, I mean, I get like, I get that like he is like eccentric and, and all that, but mm -hmm. like, 
just trying to figure out where he's going. I think like the rappers and the artists are kind of like athletes where they all have a different process and they, the final product is like what we're all waiting for. But this guy's kind of opened up and shown us the madness of the process. Him in there right. acting weird, doing push-ups with a ski mask on in a back room with a bunch of dudes. Like he's fresh off a divorce. He's fresh with all that terrible Trump stuff that he was doing, like terrible, like, yeah, I have a, I have a, uh, like, because I was able to meet Kanye and tell him that I thought what he was doing was stupid. Yo, can I, I take, f- I'm sorry, I, I don't mean, I don't mean to cut you off, but can we take five real quick? Yeah, well, yeah, go ahead. It's the Mr. Peter Parker podcast. See what's happening right now. Is Tito's a father, like a real dad. He lives at the house with his kids and his wife. He has a family. There's something going on in the background. His son just pulled up. His son's name is Declan. He's like seven years old. Something's going on. We're going to tap back in and finish this story in a matter of seconds. In the meantime, <laughs> yo, shout to Zeke for editing this shit every week and holding us down. You can follow him on social media at Hi Zeke and just H I Zeke, not like H I G H. He doesn't really smoke much weed. There he is. Always fun. It's, it's real life. I explained what was going on. I, Listen, God, I explained what was going on and just let everybody know that you're a real dad that lives in the <laughs> house with the kids and the wife. It's a family. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. just not like something we post on Instagram, right? It's a real well, family. And, and the wife is out. The wife is out doing something, and my son watched something scary on YouTube. I get and it. He bugged, and he bugged out. Yeah, it happens. Because he's I'm, upstairs by himself. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. Dad's downstairs with the door shut, talking to right. Parker nonsense on the phone. Right, 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 right. Well, what's your take on artists that have families and kids and don't talk about the kids or the family and don't post any pictures of their kids? They're not real. They're not real at all. Like, they're like, it's it's fake. Like, they, they're, 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 every life they're portraying is not like their real life. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I just, I like, like, I, I mean, I understand. I, like, maybe that's the, you're the, that's the artist side of that you're not trying to, right. like, involve your family, but like, right. I don't know. Like, you're not being like, it's not your real self. Right. You know that was I mean? an authentic moment. Like, we could have been like, edit that out, but this is really what's going on over here. We're making it happen. He's in the basement. I'm in the back room. It's the Mr. Peter Parker podcast, episode 21. Like I was saying, Tito, I have Go no problem to. talking about Kanye or supporting him or kind of, I kind of get it. I don't get it. I, but when mm-hmm. I seen him, I told him I didn't like what he was talking about on TV. I right. like this dumb shit, and I feel good about that. I can wear the shoes and feel good about it. You understand? So, I would say at the end of the day, well, and I respect, yeah. I respect that too that you did that. Like I respect I that. Like, like, like you know what I mean? Like that you had had the the guts to say that to him and let him know, like at his know, event, like, at his party. I don't like, I don't like. I mean, maybe that's why you didn't get invited to anymore. But like, <laughs> I'm cool like, you know, with it though. I'm cool no, but, like, with it. Whatever. Though. Like you know, yeah. like you got you got to tell people how it is when sometimes you know what I mean. I and, couldn't and, live with it kissing his ass and not saying that I thought the shit he was saying on TV was stupid. But at the same time, I was like, look, these guys are pretty advanced, right? They see things a little bit before we do. Things are prepared Mm -hmm. in advance. They kind of know, they're kind of playing the background. There's a method in the madness. I think we could be hearing a really great classic album, but you never know. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. You know, like everything that's come out that's, you know, I've heard from it has been, super dope you know what i mean everybody's yeah. saying that, like you know jlx snapped on his verse yeah whole, like a new yeah. whole verse is always like you know the fact that they're kind of back together maybe a, a, a well this is what i'm two. saying i have you know, a like, friend is in there and i'm i'm hearing rumblings that it's really gonna happen the, i watched the throne too i don't i can't tell you anything else i just heard it's really gonna happen I love so, it. All yeah, right, let's, so no, no, let's, 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 forget I said that. Forget I said that. Okay, all right, all right. All right. Yeah. So as we don't fast edit forward, that out, but like, I, like we keep it in. That. See, keep it in. I heard it's really <laughs> gonna happen. So check it out, right? So that was kind of a cool thing he did. We were DJing out there, had a lot of fun in Atlanta, kerosene and me rocking this party. Then we did a party on Friday night. The vibes yeah. are tremendous. People are super cool. The energy's great. The food was good. Once my stomach opened up and I smoked a little weed, everything was fine. Right. And then um, overall, it was great. Another amazing event happened last week. I enjoyed every single piece of it. It was a cultural shifting kind of like, oh, these guys are really the fucking kings of this shit that 
Locks, Dipset, and Madison Square Garden was the best versus, and I enjoyed every second of it. Jada Kiss proved to us who the biggest dog in the room was. Like, he you know, may I, not have the hits that Cam has, but he told the motherfuckers what time it was, bro. Well, I I I, I feel like he solidified himself as king, king of New York right now. Definitely. Like, there's nobody that like, has there's that. no, like... No. You know what I mean? And it's it's Jada. Like there there nobody nobody could have taken that role. And like he, no. he went in and took that role. And y'all, you know, I mean, so a lot of it was play. Like, you know what I mean? Like you saw them after you saw Cam and, and yeah, laughing. Styles after and talking about when he was pulling on, on his leg and he kicked Tommy and like right. they, it, like they they had this conversation. They were gonna be chippy with each other, they were gonna be yeah, you know what extra. I mean? And, and, like, yeah. and like almost like a WWE, but you could tell, like, what well, I think it was, um, Christian, sh- our boy Christian shared yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. about about how it was. This is the difference between rappers who hustled and hustlers who rapped. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like, I, I forget. And and that was like, I, I think that was the epitome of it. Like, I, I think mean, that's the really the difference between the two groups is that right? The locks were rappers, and then they hustled. The right. it was the other way around, I think, for the Dipset guys. In some ways, Cam was always an artist, but Cam was always an artist, and Cam, Jimmy, Cam, Jimmy, and them, yeah, they were really street guys, heavy. But so was it Cam. It's like they all were in the streets. I just think when you see guys that do push ups and drink juice, and then you see guys that don't. But I think it's also uh, like. Uh, they were more like Dipset was always more like the drip. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they wanted to be yeah. swagged out, and Big not saying samples, that they weren't. Right. Not saying that they weren't. You know what I mean? But like, right. I feel like Locks were like real hip hop dudes. You know what I mean? Like we they, the streets. they that, yeah, studied yeah. it. They studied that shit. They knew it. They got knew how to be rappers. They rap. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I don't know. That, and, that's and, just my and I think physically the Locks are tougher. They're big, they're like big guys. They're like, they feel like they're real OGs that are in, in a comfortable space being OGs. And, and the way they played it, the way they counterpunched what Dipset did, you could tell that they did their homework, they studied, the DJ knew what he was doing, they memorized all their lyrics. When they did the back to back check, Shots chest, technician. Yo, check technician is great, yeah. a legend. He's been with them forever too. Um, but when they did that yeah. locks, they did that um that freestyle from Clue, that back to back over the Showbiz and AG premiere beat, and mm-hmm. nailed it perfectly. That was a freestyle mm-hmm. from like '97. And I mean, all those little freestyles that yeah. they did, the you know, the one over the uh, Who Shot Ya, like yes, you know, like yes. that's not like new stuff. No, that, that was from like, 04. Like, that was a Green Lantern like, tape from 04. You know, I mean, that's like, you know, and it's just, I, I mean, I thought it was spectacular. I thought it was yeah, great. Guys like me and you that have been listening to Jada Kiss consecutively for like 25 years. I've, I mean, one of the artists I always go back to, Locks, always. You can put in any of these new Styles P albums. They all bang. And, um, yo, I, I can't say the same. As much as I respect them, I can't say the same for Dipset guys. Like, Joel's, I can't say the same for him. Jim's done a great job of solidifying his legacy re- as of recently, and as has Cam with with the uh, Purple Haze. Yeah. Three. It was amazing. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Purple Haze too. The, no, uh, the, the best, bro. Yeah, the I, best. I, I mean, that's it. Like that didn't take away from that album. That album. No, is still they're still all legends. great album. From, yeah, yes. and like and Jim and Jim is great. I think Jewels is kind of sullied his reputation a little bit in a lot of ways so. i think so with with uh, you know with uh, some questionable habits maybe you know what yeah, i mean like that like, in general yeah yeah yeah. and and, and you know I, I don't know why freaky zeke was there but like I, oh, like they should have had jr Ryder there with him they should have had hell rel there with them I, I was saying hell rel and uh in uh Jay Hood were in the parking lot before Yo, with, with their with their own verses in the yeah, parking battling party. each other. No, no, I <laughs> shout to Jay Hood. We got to get him on here. His perspective. I feel like. But I uh, tell you, how, the the Hell Rel verses from uh, from jail when he was in jail on the Diplomatic Community right. album were some of the best verses on that. On no, that his song. whole demeanor yeah. is great. I love yeah, it. Yeah. And I, and I, but I heard that um, before they went out, they were going to bring Mace and Puffy out. And they decided right. not to do it because they wanted to show that they could hold it on their own. And they didn't want to say, oh, you brought Puff Daddy out, blah, 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 blah. So who, they had who was going to bring Puff out? Locks were going to bring out Mace and Puffy. Wow. For Benjamins and for uh, what, 24 Hours to Live and things like that. And they were going to have Mace come out for 24 Hours to Live and go crazy. And that would have been crazy. But the fact that they didn't and still whooped their ass, I, I played them 
Dipset Records with pride on Friday night out here. So, but I here, love but the boys, but still. But here, but see, but here, here, here's my thing though too. Like, it's all about performance as yeah. well, because you know what I mean. Like yeah. those records bang, all those records bang, but it was how they played them. This the way they played them, like, you know, with the order that it was in. Right. And then, because if you li- listen to the playlist in Tidal, you know how Tidal does the yeah, playlist? Yeah, great job. Shout out to Elliot Wilson, and they, great. And they put, all, you know, they go back each record what they played. Yep. If you listen to that, it's dope. Like, even mm-hmm. like, you're like, oh man, how did, how did Dipset get beat so bad? But, you know, when Jadakiss comes out and says, they're not even rapping over the, you know, they're not even, they're rapping over their lyrics. What's going on? Body like them. like that, like that, that stuff, like that mm-hmm. component of the verses w- is really what put them under. Yeah. In my it, 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 yeah. And like I was saying, like, I talked to somebody, uh, Jada Kiss being like the heir to the throne in a way, because he was so close, they were close to big and, and they were there. Right. So it, it makes sense that Jada is now in this position. You know, he, he beat, there's no question who's better, Jada or Fab. Jada has proven that. Jada right. proved that he can lead locks past Dipset. So there's a right. level, even after 25 years of still doing this, he did put himself in an incredible position moving forward. And also solidifying that rap from that early 2000s, late 90s era is really still viable. When you have six, 700,000 people checking on the verses, it's like, nah, yeah. this is something that people still really love. On Friday or Saturday, I DJed out in St. Paul, and, and notoriously, the last 30, 40 minutes of whenever I DJ, I play nothing but Rockefeller, Nas, Biggie, uh, all that shit, G-Unit. I play all those big bangers from when we were in mm-hmm. the clubs in the early right. 2000s, and they and it kills, and everybody yeah. throws the rock up, and they sing along, and they point. It's the livest part of the night, and, and it's good to see that shit up there and getting the respect that it's deserving because to me it's one of my favorite errors in hip-hop ever yeah it was on front street it's there it's it was great i mean it was a great night for new york you know like for it to be where it was in the garden you know doing all that it was dope definitely dope Dope. I remember being in Sanctuary on Sunday night and everybody had Pelly Pelly jackets on in there. Frost took me down and Chubb was DJing (laughs) and he played flip, flip side by freeway like 11 times in a row and it was like people like going Sorry, I'm Goon Central. You know what I mean? Remember Sanctuary Sundays in Rhode right. Island? Right, right. Madness. Of course. Madness. Of course. of course. So I gotta Definitely. show you I gotta show you this book I was reading, right? So I talked about it online. Yep. You know, this is this thing, this KG book. It's called KG A to Z. It's like a story about his life and his basketball career and the music that he listened to and all the different people and coaches and friends in his life. This shit right here is tremendous i'm at the end of it in like mm-hmm. three three days i read almost the whole thing and uh it's a if you're a, a kevin garnett fan and i know a lot of people in new england i know a lot of people in minneapolis are big of kg course. fans it's cool I, I have a tie with both cities you know i know boston so well and i know minneapolis right. so well and to hear the inner so- stories of what they were going through and his coaches and his friends right he's a, he's a very intense guy and I'm going to tell you, man, that book is awesome. So if anybody out there is looking for something, KG A to Z, my goodness. Very, very good. It brought me to, like, emotions. Like, four. I had to put it down. Like, shut the book and put it down. It was, like, so po- It's powerful, man. Really, really good shit. Have, do, you read, do you read it all? I haven't read a book in years. I mean, I read. I, I tried to, I try to read, you know, I read to the kids. I do all that, I do that. <laughs> stuff. I do you know, that. like, I you know, like, I. Uh, it's tough, you know what I mean? Like, I know. to really get like into something, you know what I mean? I know, just, I know, I know. The other thing is, like, who's when's the last time you go to a bookstore? Like, we've been This like, is what have happened. Bookstores, like, I saw this online, right? I saw the book yeah. online, and, it, and I was like, oh, I want to read that. And then I kept on, like, every time I went to Target, I would look in the book section to see if it was in there, yeah. but it's got Not a lot there. of profanity in it and shit like that. Yeah, so they didn't right. put it in Target. So I'm looking, I'm looking, and I kept on saying to myself, Pete, if if you keep on thinking about this in your head, you should just order it off of Amazon. Yeah, and I get that. Like, I know, I know, no, <laughs> that's what I did. Yeah, but like, I, mean? I don't know. Like, I'm like a like one of those dudes. Like, I, I lived across the street from a bookstore when I was a kid. Oh, word! Uh, there was this place called Tatnik Bookseller in Worcester, and it was like right across the street from the crib. And you know, I go in there, and I'd spend hours in there, just like walking around, looking at books, looking at like they had like a cool like art section with tons of graffiti books, and like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, like a lot of like old hip hop books and stuff like that. And and 
I, you know, that's what I spent a lot of time doing, right? When I was a kid, like just going in there and like uh-huh. fucking around and looking at all the books and stuff like that. So, you know, like I'm, a, I, I need something in my hands to like reopen it and be like, do I really want to spend my money on this before I like oh, know enough about? It? But now, now that you tell me about it, and you know what, my, my shout to Bean, Bean, I know Bean read that. Bean's it's a big fire. Big, Bean big wrote a lot of book. books. He's been yeah. he get the Bean's ten pound on- weights in the books. I seen him on the gram. I see, going dumb. Bean's, big, <laughs> Bean's big on those autobiographies. About They're good. The I used to read about and comedians Boston. and shit. Yeah, 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 I used to do yeah. like a lot of like shit. But I'm gonna tell you, it, it, that, this one's good because. I find it, and this is an honest statement, man. I find it hard to get really inspired by any of, like, the new shit. It, like, I kind of hit that peak where it's like, oh, yeah, this is y'all shit. It's great. I know it's good, but it's just not my right. shit. And so right. the Dipset and the D-Block was really great. That was inspiring. The KG book has been – it really is stories about him in South Carolina and Chicago – and going into the NBA, but all the street ball games and all the stuff, because I, before we had phones and before we had internet, it was like outside time always and going to parks and finding games. And it just right. brought me back to that. Um, another thing that's been on my top of my list is the Nas album. Oh, so good. So you got, good. You've got opinions on this. This is King's Disease 2, solely produced by Hip Boy. The second one he's put out in two years. Right. What's your take I mean, on my my personal opinion? Like, and I and we we kind of spoke on this earlier, um, off this, but mm-hmm. you know, Illmatic is obviously number one. You can't yeah. you can't touch you can't you can't remake Illmatic. Illmatic nah, that was such a special. You know what I mean? Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was written, you know, that came out after that was I feel like was still in that same really good direction. You know what I mean? Where he was kind of like people were helping him choose his beats and you know the production wise dre was on a lot of that yeah, stuff he wanted a head he it was the and, G- era was coming in it, the, but, the, but it was but it was still like really well done it was still like to the to the core of you know of what he needed to do mm-hmm. i think this is the best album that he's had since it was written that's my that's Big, my opinion better than stillmatic yes i like stillmatic a lot that it's a really good album. I, I still listen to that all the time. But we talked a little bit. There's in, in the middle of Nas's thing, whether it's Nostradamus, whether it's uh, God's Son album, whether it's Street Disciple. There's some like iffy beat selection, some kind of like Street type. Yeah, some some stuff that maybe not up to par, right? Which is always which has always been the knock on him, like that, like his beat selection is is kind of like yeah. not up to par. I honestly think that my opinion is that Hit Boy kind of like said to him. Let me, let me make the beats. Mm-hmm. Just rhyme. Just and and I'm gonna handle it sonically, and we're gonna go from and we're gonna go from there. And you could I, that's just my opinion. I don't know yeah, if, yeah. if well, other well, people hear that, but like, right. but like, I I just I feel like you know like Hit Boy had a lot to do with it's fire. How well it sounds, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that Death Row East could be one of his best songs. Um, the storytelling in that, and the way the song the beat builds, the beats crazy. Hit Boy said he studied Johnny J, uh, one of Tupac's producers that did a lot of stuff uh, for like All Eyes on Me. So it yeah. really sounds like an All Eyes on Me record. But just hearing that story and Ed Lover at the end talking about Tupac passing away at a Nas concert and mm. and how they were close in a lot. They were close in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like, you know, Pac was on. We talked about this before. Pac was on some like WWE shit too. They were really riling people up. Um, yep. But, you know, at the end of the day, this thing he put out across the board, man, I, I, it's one of the best albums I heard from Nas ever. And I, he puts us in this position where, oh, this man's going to keep going with this. This isn't like he's not phasing out. I feel like Hove and No Shots Fired, like one of the, my favorite artists of all time, he might be kind of falling back a little bit. It, I'm hearing that Watch the Throne 2 might be happening, but right. Nas is like... By himself, but it's been a while running. since since yeah. you've seen something drop yeah. from, oh, from Jay. And, yeah, versus yeah, and, 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 and yeah, and you know, like, and I thought I thought four 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 was good. I thought it was a I good, good it. album, good project. But like, you know, like, it, you kind of felt like that was his end. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah, and like that's Jay. Yeah, that's a Sean yeah. Carter album. This yeah. is this is Nas. This is like Esco Nas, grown man. Right. And I feel like he can still go and do another album. You know what I mean? Like uh, if he wanted to, yeah. if, if he can, if he can stay with Hip Boy and he can stay in that lane, um, I feel like he can, he can make another album. 
I'm excited, man. I feel like the artists that we love are going to keep making music um, and we don't have to stop loving these artists. Like it's like think about Big Daddy Kane, right? He fell back when gangster rap came in. So it was mm -hmm. so tight on him that he was doing the Big Daddy Kane stuff. But when then it was like Mob Deep and all this kind of gangster rap was more grimy. Yeah, yeah. West Coast stuff with Dre and them. They were right. like, oh, you should do talk about shooting people. And, and Big Daddy Kane's like, I'm not doing that. He fell back right. off of gangster rap. Artists don't have to do that anymore. They can go no. in their own little space and they can evolve on their own time. And we're going to keep seeing music by fucking all these well, people. Cool, all because people are people our age still want to hear a Nas album. Big time. You know what I mean? Big like, time. you know what I mean? It's and it's there's still a lot of us in, that, that listen and that consume. And, that, and mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 still it's still viable. You know what I mean? If, age if, is if, different now, man. I met a person on Saturday that was 50 years old. I was like, look, 35. And, and, and we're like, age, what is this age thing? Like we counting on mm -hmm. counting ourselves out from how people were perceived in previous generations. It's not, not it's not fair. You know what I mean? Like right. it's right. not fair. I'm gonna be forty three at the end of the month. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. You know what I mean? Like yeah, facts. Facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, so check out if you haven't heard that Nas album. That motherfucker great. The KG book is tremendous. Anyone that didn't see Dipset in D Block, go back and watch that and study that. If you're a young MC that wants to get in the game and be taken serious and you don't just want to do whatever trend is out there, watch that. There's a lot of jewels in that. Um, yo, I feel good. And, and since the ATL trip, I took mushrooms again. Oh, boy. How'd that go? I had a great time the second time. Um, it's Better. fun. I enjoy it. Yeah, I enjoy. It's like a little like oh, like there's this thing yeah. called micro micro dosing, I which did is that. like I did that, like, like which you know like people taking very small amounts of it, which it's like taking it's, Adderall, yeah. bro. It's like it's like yeah, music, yeah. natural Adderall. You just get kind of cranked up. That's all it is. Yeah. it's like I get a little hot. You know what I mean? Like right, 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 right. No, it's interesting. It's interesting. You would dig it. You would dig uh, the micro dose. A micro I mean, dose and a little bit of weed. Yeah, you would dig that. <laughs> I would dig it. I, you I, I dig it all the time. I dig, I dig it all the time. Ben digging it. Are you kidding me? I'm here. <laughs> I, I we got a couple people we got to connect with. Uh, shout out to my, my bro, Glasses Malone, out on the West Coast. Um, I want to talk about him because he, uh, he got a really great perspective on Tupac. And it's unique and being a West Coast guy. So I'm trying to get Glasses on. He has a new song out right now. Okay. I spoke to Stolly. He's in the, in the studio for the next two weeks when he gets out. He's going to join us over here on the Mr. Peter Parker podcast. Don't. Um, yeah, it's just some shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's been 21 episodes, and we haven't done one, just me and you, in a minute. And I think there was a, yeah. lot, of, a lot of cool shit happening right now. I mean, NBA Summer League's going on. I've been watching that. Um, I've been playing basketball. I was outside. Fuck, bro. I just walked around my backyard with no shirt on. Like, that's a crazy over here, son. You got, you got to <laughs> I'm... It's unbelievable. My summer's been great, really. I'm 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 happy for you. The weather out, out east has been kind of shitty, man. I'm not gonna lie. It's been yeah, kind of yeah, rainy and yeah, cloudy, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and uh, we get a c good stretch a couple days during the week, yeah. and then the weekend comes, yeah. and it's like I'm gonna rain on your parade the entire weekend. So it's been kind of like. Is there any parties going on? There's been day parties. There's been stuff going on. There's been a, you yeah. know, concerts at Fenway this past week, which have been uh, interesting. Oh yeah, Billy Joel, week. right? Billy Joel, Guns N' Roses, New Ooh. Kids on the Block with BBD, uh, and then Zach Brown Band, which okay. I gotta say is the worst crowd in the face I of the earth. I can imagine. I I think the country crowd is deplorable. I mean, I just definitely it, it, like here's here's what I'm gonna say. So like, yo, if you live in Texas or like, you know, the Midwest or like, and you got sure. like. Sure. You know, like you're in country, like your country, and you get out and you ride your horse and you go out and do mess with cattle or farm stuff. A real like, heck redneck type person. Like farm you boy. can, but like if you're from Quincy or Dedham and you put on fucking cowboy boots and show up with cowboy hats on <laughs> to go watch it, you're just playing dress up. It's, it's cultural me, it's appropriation, just, man. It's cultural yeah, appropriation. I, 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 I just, I, I don't, <laughs> I, I, just, I just don't respect it. Like I just don't like. I, you're I can't, a poser. Can't, I don't get I don't get behind it like I don't listen know. if you want to put on that little leather jacket with the little fringes and shit like that I need to Bro, see you on listen, a horse listen I saw some kid right and he had a uh like a like a tuxedo vest that he had bedazzled mm. with the American flag 
Mm. No, sh- no shirt on underneath mm. with some American flag shorts. Okay. And a cowboy hat and a, f- and, and cowboy. Heavy, boots. heavy. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, who nah, do you man. think you, that's not, that's not it, bro. He's from Melrose? Where's he from? It was from Melrose? Like, where, <laughs> you, where you from? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Yo, that's crazy. No, I can't deal with it. I can't even listen to country music at all. My daughter like sings a little in the car when it comes on the pop station, but I can't really, I can't mess with it, man. I, it's all. just tough. It's a tough crowd. And they all they I do is want to drink, drink and fight. And, and you know, it's just trashy, like, man. How was I'm the good. new kids crowd? Oh, I've never seen so many cricketed t shirts in my life. Like, oh. you, you, know what, you know what crick, you know what cricket is, right? Like, no. it's, so it's this thing. Uh, it's like, it sounds cut, whack though. It does. It's like, a, it's like a cutting machine. So, like, it cuts like, like, and you can cut like vinyl to make your own t shirts. So oh. it's like, so like, you know, everybody had like NKOTB besties. Homemade. Like, you know, like, we like homemade like like the cricket. people that go on like they the people <laughs> like, on, like, like it's like it's like etsy like everyone went on etsy and bought the price like, is right shirts where they have them yes made up. yes yes yeah. yeah but like even worse like Ugh. you know like you know uh, i know what it is i'm, I'm donnie's be- favorite like no one wants to be donnie's favorite donnie. like, <laughs> i don't even know if donnie is donnie's favorite at this point <laughs> but, you know here. like but you know like you know yeah it's you know that was cool i mean but like it was just it was it's a tough it was a tough all of tough. them i would have went to joel I, I like the joel hits and i feel like that's a good that's a legendary artist i joel guns and roses would have been cool yeah, like, yeah you know yeah, what i mean yeah, like yeah. seeing slash and axel and axel, all that kind yeah, of stuff dude oh, yeah that would but, that's that's legendary shit man but you know they actually made a big big uh kind of like big deal about um this is another year that's gone by without having a person of color headline a show at Fenway. Oh, wow. And uh, if you look, I mean, it's all. Yeah, you know, yeah. White and, and and it's like, I, I don't know what, who, who we kind of had the debate a little bit, like who do you think could headline a, a show at Fenway that would sell? Hove. You know, Hove did it. Hove is the only one that's, I think, him and then one other person. The, one, the year you went, Brady came walking in right behind you. Yeah, yeah, that was that. That was hilarious, um, but that was yeah. With the, but that was with um, Justin Timberlake. It was the yeah. Uh, oh, the, the see, but that's yeah. Of course, he got it. Suit with and tie. Yeah, like, yeah, but yeah. you know, like, you know, like, who could headline? And I, I like we kind of like you know Beyonce. I think she could yeah, headline a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah of it, course. Sell up, kind of like, she sold um, out U.S. Bank Stadium. Yeah, yeah. But like, I, you know, who could headline a show that could sell out Fenway? As a black artist, and Prince, that, and, that, and Prince was alive, he could have done it. You know what I mean? Of, of course, Prince, but Prince is a is a different caliber artist. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, 100%. like would would Drake do it? You Janet know what Jackson, I mean? Janet Jackson, Janet Jackson, maybe, maybe. but I don't, th- I don't, I don't think so. I think the bill would have to be bigger. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, I, I respect that, but like money talks at the end of the day, and and yeah. and, and, and you know, like I mean, if people aren't spending money and going out to support these artists and like how do you expect people to you know book them at these big shows and big venues how does, how's the ticket game been back you run the ticket a booking agency out in boston you guys are like ticket brokers has it been intense with the with the return of concerts or is it cool are people laid back um i mean it's cool i think that that a lot of people are worried about the delta variant which oh, is yeah. you, you know like a little nerve-wracking um, there's been some rumblings about uh, masks getting, you know, mandatory again for for venues and stuff like yeah, that. Which, yeah, which yeah. Not, right now they aren't, um, but they're saying like, you know, if you're, uh, you know, if you're if you're susceptible and you haven't been vaccinated, you should be wearing a mask. And right. you know, like, and with it, the Delta variant kind of exploding a little bit. People are getting a little nervous about it. Did you? See I mean, it's still. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was say, did you see what happened out here in Minneapolis with First Avenue? They said that moving forward to go to any First Avenue event, you have to have a vaccination card or proof of the uh, negative uh, COVID negative test. test with 72 hours, basically what the whole New York City is doing right now. And uh, a lot of people, there's mixed reactions I, on this. You know? I think that's a trend that's going to happen. And, yeah. and, you know, people say that, oh, well, that's, you know, you know, if you don't want to go, then don't go. I mean, you know what I mean? If that's the right. stipulation and that's what it We're is. Like, ill times, man. People, are, a lot of people died from this thing. And if there's going to be a new variant and people are worried about their businesses staying open, my whole thing is like this. If you don't want to get the shot, 
I understand if somebody comes up to me, a person of color, a native person, any sort of minor, anybody in all the world, white, black, whatever, says, I don't trust the shot. Cool. I'm cool with that, right? But Go get that little test. We don't need people with the low key delta walking around the party, hugging on people and shit, right. and getting everybody right. sick to death. Right. I don't know. Right, right. If you don't know, and that's the thing, like I, I, we, that's the stuff that everybody's trying to avoid because you know what? Right. The last thing we need is another shutdown, which I personally don't think that would happen because I think that the uh, the government can't afford it and they mm -hmm. can't afford to start paying everybody again. And you know, I'm hoping that. A lot of people get back to work soon with the you Definitely. know with the PUAs ending in September and all that kind of stuff that right. things will change because uh, the, the economy needs it. These cities need it. You know, people need businesses need it, small businesses. And yeah, yeah. It's important, man. Big time, man. So if you have a chance to potentially get vaccinated and you think that's something you want to do, go do it. If, if you don't want to do it, that's cool, too. But. If you want to keep the I'm, game going and the show's right. going, go get your little test at the airport. You spit right. into the thing. It's no shot. It's nothing in your nose. You can find out within 24 hours if you're clean or not. We'd like to have people out at the shows. I'd like to have people, healthy people out here at the party. Well, if you, and if you, want, you, it's cool. Right. I get it. I get it. Right. And if you want to participate and you want to be able to do all this stuff, I mean, that's kind of like the stipulations. It is what it is. Like, I just feel like it's kind of selfish of you, like, for not not to want to do it, like to like, you know, make sure everybody's safe. You know but what the, I mean? But the like, dumb shit is everybody all of a sudden on my Twitter timeline is like a scientific genius. Oh, that's people, the stuff I can't People can, yeah, that yeah, can't yeah, figure yeah, out yeah. their rap careers and try to get anything happening with that, have all the information on Bitcoin and Delta variant. No, yeah. thank you. They can't tell their ass from their elbow, but they're, they're all right with fucking, you know. Get tell the them. fuck out of here. No. I, yeah, I'll figure you. it out on my own. Thanks for the heads up, though, but I'm going to figure it out on my I saw own. some lady in the, in the grocery store talking about it, you know everybody and I, and, I, and I looked at her I said oh you must get your news from Facebook mm -hmm. and she kind of looked at me like what do you mean what are you insinuating and I was that like the news on say Facebook isn't legitimate that you're a, that you're a dumbass that you're a QAnon <laughs> right. sicko moron like, no. was... yeah I look at the first thing that I know is I don't know much right, right. And I'm learning and I'm listening and what I do, do know is not to be a follower right so whatever right. you don't be a quick to jump on things wait a second when people are getting trashed in the media don't jump on there and say ah, i knew it was him like you don't know the right. situation watch the shit unfold i'm right. more of a uh like watching and observing things more than i am critiquing things these days you know what i mean and seeing the different yeah. nuances of what's happening out here but like i said if you got the shot congratulations if you're gonna get it good for you if you don't want to do it Hey, good for you as well. I'm cool with that, man. Episode 21 in the fucking can, Tito. Yes, sir. Yo, I want a Dipset D-Block Part 2. I know it's not going to happen. And it's really unnecessary. I just want to watch it again. So, so good. I, I had it like a little, like, who who would see Fat Joe in a, in a versus? Oh, man. Fat Joe. Fat Joe and Nori would be fun. They're friends. Yeah. They're yeah. really good friends. I fucking party with them in Mexico at enough's wedding. Trust me, they're really good friends. And now, but like, like, do you think like, all right, like if they performed, like performed, performed, or like hit for hit? Like, I think that they did it almost kind of like how DMX and Snoop did it in a way in like a studio. But I don't, yeah. think, I don't think Versus is doing that like low key stuff anymore. I think it's because no, it's because because it's because they got hot on with Triller. Mm -hmm. And now they're doing it like live, you know, yeah. at venues, and, I, and I'm cool, and I'm cool with that. Like, I'd love to go see one eventually if they have another yeah. one that's worth stepping out for. But like, I almost, I, I, you know, like, I if I if all this stuff wasn't going on up here in Boston, all these concerts this week, you would have went. I, would, I was told I was you there. I was gonna go. Christian, Christian was like, "Let's go." You know, I I checked tickets because I was like, "Oh, yeah. let me let me see how much were the like. tickets? How much were they worth?" You know, it ended up being like a good resale show. To be honest, it was, I think it was like like between like one fifty and two hundred to great. get in. It's great, it's and great. I think it was like I think the seats were originally priced at like eighty bucks or something like that. It's the really, cheapest it's a seat. good ticket, man. So I mean, that's that's dope.
But yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I definitely, I saw UFO Feeb was there. I talk, I spoke to Feeb today. He's in London with Joe right now, um, okay. doing shows out there. And uh, yo, and Feeb was living his best life. Shout to Feeb, man. We got Joe. Make- Joe. Joe had a great time. Man. He they had they had his face all over there, man. Dog, was- Joe's the be- Joe's become one of the best commentators in hip hop history. His I remember mm-hmm. the first time I saw him on Drink Champs, and they were asking him about stories. Go back and watch the first Fat Joe Drink Champs if anybody gets a chance. And Joe's nervous to talk. Like he does. He even says in this in- interview recently I saw with like Stephen Jackson and them all the Smoke podcast. Yeah, 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 he yeah, said yeah. there's a fine line between like storytelling and being kind of like a hype beast you know what i mean of trying to like get attention for this shit he tells a tupac story on that bitch that's fucking crazy about tupac coming up in the cypher with a red bandana and two guns out like a maniac (laughs) but nah props to joe because he's really stepping into his own as just like hip-hop kind of play-by-play guy and storytelling Mm. he's fucking phenomenal man definitely well Okay. Fucking, uh, it's been real, Pete. Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. I said 30 minutes. It's been about an hour. Good to see your face, brother. I'm here, man. You should come out to Minneapolis when you get a chance, man. I'd like to have you out here. We have the fucking Airbnb upstairs, man. I got You got to come out. We can arrange some stuff, man. I need that. uh, The cold weather's coming, so I'm sure it'll be cheaper to fly out to. Yeah, uh, come out to Truck Park in St. Paul, bro. Going crazy out there, man. Yes, man. I want to, I want to go to those, uh, breweries that zeke's going to all the time uh, brewery cool. brewery season is in full effect out here bro everybody likes to stand around with a cool like pilsner some sort of little, pale, little pale IP, ale a little ipa some indian pale ale i enjoy casamigos right i like the darker one the reposado we do the we do casamigos over here um and you know maybe tito's vodka you know me man powers irish whiskey so good <laughs> So we, need, I need that powers endorsement. If you are next to some sort of United Liquors or somebody that, yeah, please, we need a liquor endorsement. We'll get trashed every episode. We promise. Oh, by the way, let me let me tell you, I I am good friends with a uh, a rep from Budweiser, and he got me all the um, Biggie Smalls cans. Dude, you, you gotta show us. I don't I don't have them yet. They're on, they're, they're on the way. They're next they're on the episode. way up from New York. I, did, he called down. I guess they had like twenty five thousand cases left, wow. and they got me. A, he got me a case, so I'm oh. uh, I'm looking forward to coming. So that's a, a little uh, little preview Next of something. episode twenty two. Tito's gonna have a real tall boy with Biggie's grill on the front of it. I I'm gonna get some of the merch, but they they didn't have anything left. I'm about to dip off and go to a studio session with Muja Messiah to re-record and finalize his lyrics for a single that I'm putting out called Backpack Shit. And it's Muja and Crime Apple on the record. Shout out to Crime. Oh, let's fantastic, go. Fantastic, fantastic hats. I'm going to add cuts to it. Um, Columbion did the beat, and we're wrapping everything up um, and trying to get the vocals done. But shout out to Crime. He killed it. Muja's verse is crazy. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm coming up with some records probably in September. Dope. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yo, like, subscribe, all that stuff. YouTube, follow. Spotify. Follow us. Follow us. Please.